Hi everybody, welcome back. Tony again here with Shinsho Yoga and for this week's video I would like to talk about some wrist openers. Now in yoga we often don't find many postures that are specifically for opening the wrist. Uh, you know there are things that we do where being on the wrists may offer some opening, you know, down dog, but that generally causes more people more pain in the wrist than open the wrist. Maybe table position and where we would come to cat and cow and things like that. That sometimes may help open the wrist a little bit just because of the pressure on there, but often the time it causes people more pain than opening. And none of those postures are specifically for opening the wrists. Uh, and in our day and age, especially people who sit and use a computer all day. If you are someone using a computer all day long or a majority of your day, uh, or if you, um, well, most people in this day are always going to be on their phone, right? Uh, but it also applies to people, who, you know, you're doing construction, you're swinging a hammer. You know, I've talked to, sometimes I've done some classes for people who uh, aren't necessarily yogis, and I've had people in construction, and they're like, I, that, that wrist stretch is so difficult for me because I've been swinging a hammer for 30, 40 years. What the, what the body does over time is it adapts to whatever you do. So if you sit all day long, the back of your body will shorten right, to accommodate the seated position. If you're swinging hammers all day long, your forearms and wrists are going to build up tension in them, so you have the strength to be able to do that and take the impact and the abuse that comes with that. But over time, that all does damage. Whether you are seated and the back of the body is shortened and you've been in, sitting in an office for 30 years, and now when you go to stand up, you're like, oh, 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 you can't I can't bend down and pick things up. Or when you go to do any type of, you've been swinging a hammer and you try to do some fine motor movement and your hands just don't do it. Right? Maybe you were a guitar player and you know, you work in instruction and when you were 20 you were fine, but now you're 55, 60 and your hands just don't make those movements. It's tension. All in here. Tension. Right? Uh, so I want to offer you a couple stretches for the wrist. These I do in my classes pretty regularly. And it's probably one of the more challenging things that people will do in the class are these stretches. Uh, how I came about them is once again through martial arts. I, um, I, got, I had tennis elbow for a while, not from tennis, from martial arts. And you know uh, what happens with tennis elbow is the muscle up here spasms and you can't straighten the arm, right? With each, either arm, right, which one it is, it goes into spasm and balls. And I couldn't straighten my arm, right? I could only get it to about here. And I could try, but it just wouldn't go. And it was, it was painful. And doing these stretches, it would eventually open it back up. Now, that injury that was there that did that to how I got that wasn't something that happened over years and years and years of, of repeating the repetitive motion. Um, I had heard it one time in practice and in martial arts practice and it spasmed so I was able to open it up. If you have tension in your arms and your forearms and your wrists and your hands from years of repetitive action, understand there's a lot of layers to that onion and it's going to take you time to peel back those layers. That damage doesn't happen overnight. That happens little by 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 little over time and you're going to have to do this to get it to happen, to, to open it back up. So let me give you these stretches that I do with my students here. Right? So the first stretch is going to be taking your hands flat onto your mat just having the fingers point towards each other, almost touching, right? Hands are flat, arms are straight. And we're just going to rock from side to side. We're going to breathe. Inhaling. And exhaling. This is where we start. And you're going to do this for maybe 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute, depending on your body and then come back to neutral. In between all of our stretches, bring the hands back to neutral. Let them rest. The second thing you're going to do is take the hands, fingers pointing out to the left and to the right. 
You want the heels of the palms close together, not touching, but close together. Arms are straight, palms are flat, and again, side to side. And we'll breathe. Inhaling. And exhaling. And once again, we'll bring the hands back to neutral. This is where it gets more challenging. This is where people find it to be painful. Take the tops of the hands down, fingers pointing back towards the feet, and you're going to rock forward. The further you rock forward, the more you're going to feel it. You only want to rock far enough to feel a stretch, so if it's painful, only rock as far to feel a stretch. Now, placement of the hands is important. If you put your hands far out on the mat, you're getting a steeper angle on the wrists, and it might, it might be extremely difficult to do. So bring the hands closer back to the can't be all the way back here. You won't get anything to it. But you want to be able to try to pull a 90 degree on the wrist as best as you can and just rock. Right? You rock forward, the weight goes on the wrist, the rock back, you take the weight off the wrist. Right? And we want to keep the backs of the hands down because we're stretching that. And then once again, we'll bring our hands back to neutral, let them rest a moment. And the final bit of this stretch. Externally rotate the fingers and the hands here 180 so the fingers point back towards the knees as best as you can. Now your body might not do that. Maybe you're a little bit to the side. Maybe you don't have that um, pronation in the arm there to do that. That's fine. You'll learn it over time and sometimes people's bones just don't do that. Right? The way the supination and the pronation of the forearm um, is different in all people. Some people it's very shallow, some people it's very deep, some people just need to open it up, some you can't. So as best as you can pointing back towards the knees and we're going to rock. You're rocking back on this one, the same thing applies. If it's painful, only rock far enough so you feel that stretch through the back of the wrist and the back of the forearm there, or the bottom of the forearm, however you want to call it. The part that's facing you on the camera right now, that's where you want to feel the stretch. And again, if you move those hands a little closer to the legs, it'll make it easier. If they're all the way out here, you're pulling a much greater angle. It can be very difficult. You only want to come to about a 90, right? And rock. And then we come back to neutral. From here, you want to now let your wrists rest. So whatever posture you're doing next, if you're a teacher and you had someone do this, don't have them automatically come into downward facing dog. If you're a student, don't come automatically into downward facing dog. Um, if you don't go into cat and cow next, you got to get the pressure off the wrists and let the um, that them rest. You got to let that muscle relax again. So uh, I often go to thread the needle after that. And I have a video for that. Probably right there. Right? Hopefully. <laughs> or maybe there. I don't know. Uh, so don't keep the weight on the hands after that. It's going to be too much for, for students especially, or if you are the student for you, uh, you want to let it relax. So coming into a posture after that of either, if you want to keep some more movement, not movement, but a little bit more to do with upper body, thread the needle, or you want to come into child's pose or come into puppy pose, right? Anything to allow this to rest now for a, for a, a, a few breaths, maybe, you know, a minute or so. Let that relax, let that come back, and then you can go from there into, you know, downward facing dog or working from table or whatever you're going to do, but let that rest. So, uh, those have no names, right? There's no, there's no, no Sanskrit names for those. Again, they don't come, even come from yoga. There's something I learned in, in my world of martial arts. So, but if you're having wrist issues, you're having tennis elbow, if you have tension here, that's what helped me. That's what I would recommend for you. So, as always, let the thoughts arise, let them pass by, and return to the breath over and over and over. Just remember to breathe. Thanks again for watching. Namaste.